One of the most common machining operations on the milling machine is squaring up stock. Every, pretty much every part you make on the mill starts out as a rough sawn piece of material. It needs to be squared up and machined to size before you can really get started on the part. So what I'm going to do here today is square up this rough sawn piece of aluminum and uh, show you how, how I do it. First thing I do is pick the largest side and use that as my reference surface. So that's the part I'm going to machine first. I'll, I'll set it on a, a parallel, use a parallel to support it. And then I use a uh, piece of aluminum welding rod to place between the movable jaw of the chuck and the rough sawn surface on the part. Just to take up any irregularities. We'll just clamp it in and go ahead and machine the top surface of the part. take any more material off than necessary so you don't run the risk of running out of stock before the parts to size. So now we have one flat surface, the rest of them are sawed, one machine surface. We're going to use that as our reference. So for this demonstration I'm going to go ahead and mark that surface one just so we can keep track of it. So the next thing I want to do is machine another surface at a right angle to this first surface. So we'll take our reference surface, put it against the solid jaw of the vise. Again, we'll have to use a welding or a piece of wire or something soft between the sawed surface and the movable jaw of the vise. You can use a piece of wood or wire, aluminum wire in this case, whatever you have available. Okay, now we'll go ahead and machine this surface flat. So now we have a uh, two surfaces machine on the block, a right angle, 90 degrees to each other. Okay, I'm going to mark this second surface I just machined as number two, again, just to keep track of it. Okay, now I'm going to do the, the surface opposite the side number two. I'm going to keep keeping my reference surface against the solid jaw of the vise. I'll just rotate the part around put the number two surface down against the parallel and use the wire again because we're still clamping on a rough sawed surface. And now we have a machine surface down against the parallel so we want to hammer the block down so it's tight on the parallel. I like to use a ball peen hammer and just hold the part when you tap it. You can feel when it sets solid on the parallel. Now we'll go ahead and machine this surface flat. original reference surface and two other surfaces are machined at a right angle to it. Now's the time you want to step in and measure the part and see where you're at across these two finished surfaces. Okay, we're at one inch 95 thousandths now. Let's say I want to take that down to an inch. Put it back in the chuck using our wire as before. Back in the vise, excuse me. Hammer it down tight. Now we'll set the dial on the uh, Z 
z-axis the table to zero. And I have to take out 95,000, so I'll move it up about 90. Yeah, let's say about 85. We'll leave 10 thousandths for finished cut. Now we'll bring it up to 95, and this is our finished cut. Ideally, you should always take one roughing and one finishing cut. If you have to take more than that, you've either left too much stock on the part, or you've left too much stock on the part. That's the whole idea of sawing a part out is to get it close enough so you can just take one roughing, one finishing cut. So now we should be down to an inch. Okay, within a half thousandth, that's good enough. So now we have our original ref reference surface and two other surfaces, 90 degrees to that and the proper dimension. Notice I'm only, only using one parallel here. It's because the part is so small. If it was a larger part, I'd use two, but in this case, it's it's pointless. Okay, at this point, I'll put the original surface down against the parallel. And clamp on surface two and three. Since we again have a machine surface down, we'll want to tap. Okay, first of all, we don't need to use the wire anymore because we have machine surfaces on both jaws. So now we just tap down against the parallel, make sure it's setting tight. Parallel shouldn't be shouldn't be able to move once it's tapped down. And we'll clean up this surface. As before, if we wanted to take this down to finish size, we'd measure it, move our table up the right dimension, and cut this surface again. But I'm going to skip that part for now, just in the essence of time. And we'll move on to the last two surfaces. Okay, now we want to go back to put our original reference surface against the solid jaw device. And you can take your solid square, set it on the parallel. and square up off, off the number two surface, the second surface. You always want to work off the, the lowered number surfaces. Okay, now we're square to the vice jaw, the solid jaw of the vice. We're square to the parallel, so we can go down and clean up this fourth surface here. Get close. We've got five of the surfaces machined, nice and square. All right. For the last one, again, keep that original reference surface against the solid jaw. Rotate the part 180 degrees. Hammer it down against the parallel. Try to keep them hitting your fingers. Not always possible. And then you clean up this surface. We'd want to go ahead and, if this were a real part, we want to take it down to the right 
blank, so we can go ahead and measure this. These two surfaces we just machined and move the table up the required amount and take it down to size, but in this case I'm going to skip that because I just wanted to show you basically how to score up the parts. That's it.